Hey everybody, Evan Bowser here, back for another episode of Let Us Eat. Today I'm joined by Darren Dean. She's a talented vocalist. Um, She mostly sings jazz, um, and she also does a lot of food justice work. She's really well aware of um, what's going on today with the veganism movement and, um, and all those kinds of things. So we're about to go chop it up over some food at this place called Happy Veggie in Redondo Beach. So yeah, enjoy this one. So Happy Veggie, this is a place you've been um, quite quite a few times, huh? Yeah, yeah. So my friend, my best friend from high school, she was plant-based. And so over the summer, she was like, Darren, we got to go to this, this pho restaurant. Because yeah. they do pho, but they also have a, um, in, like kind of Thai fusion yeah. food. And so I went there, and I wasn't a vegan at the time. And I was like, this is pretty, pretty good. Huh. So. Was that, a, by the way, was that a Larry... David reference? It, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, Hilarious. I am, like, the biggest Curb Your Enthusiast. No way. Ever. Me too. I mean, if it wasn't for Curb, I never would have gotten to Seinfeld. And if it wasn't for Seinfeld, I wouldn't be doing this show because... Really? I got the idea from this show from Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Yeah. Wow. See, that's interesting because if it wasn't for Seinfeld, I wouldn't right. have given it to Curb. I mean, I was familiar with Seinfeld and I'd seen it a few mm-hmm. times, but I didn't really think it was funny until I watched Curb, and then I was able to realize that George Costanza is literally Larry. just like Larry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, what other kind of like plant-based uh, restaurants are around here? There's, in the South Bay, it's interesting because there are usually healthy options, so mm-hmm. there may not be like a specific vegan restaurant, but they have a lot of... Um, Options so like right next to Happy Veggie is a place called Fat Tomato, mm-hmm. which serves vegan pizza and um, like there's a restaurant right across the street on Ringe um, called Thai Bistro and they have like soups and vegetables and tofu like a lot of Chinese food. Each each menu usually in the South Bay has like a vegan friendly option, so yeah. I'll go to different restaurants and order something. Like, uh, you know, one of my, my best friends says, you know, I don't believe in the vegans that can't get something off the menu. Yeah. So that kind of ideology has me to really be creative when I see some, like, something where I'm not necessarily, like, vegan all the way, you know? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you're basically saying that, like, you're, you'll go for some some dishes that are, like, maybe, like, vegetarian and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm the, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah, well, like, it'll be vegan, but, like, if the restaurant, like, let's say, for instance, like, I go to a Mexican restaurant, like, yeah. I'll piece together a vegan meal from Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I do see, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because everyone hates those vegans that are like, um, excuse me, like, I yeah, can't Yeah, there's here. nothing, right, right, right. Right, you know? I feel like a lot of people think vegan is, like, this, like, special food mm-hmm. or something like that. What they don't realize is like there's a lot of everyday things that are vegan. Like Sour Patch Kids are vegan, right? Like, which is kind of scary, right? Yeah, it's just like <laughs> weird, like just weird things, and like you, it doesn't have to be like a big deal. Like corn, like chips, like you said at a me- Mexican restaurant, that's that's vegan, and then mm-hmm. and then you just like get like a veggie burrito or something, right? Right? right. Like you're, you're set. Yeah, I find that like a lot of people in the South Bay just because of like the large amount of wealth like in the beach community they have like with healthier lifestyles usually um there are more places to exercise more like natural juice bars and um i grew up in between two households because my parents separated when i was younger so i lived in carson growing up and then you know for my high school life i lived out here in manhattan beach redondo beach growing up in carson was you know was challenging when i ever wanted to make a dietary change because there just wasn't food accessible that would have like instant like i can go here you're going to happy veggie right now it's like five minutes away but like in carson like you have to make a trek it definitely has informed me in 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 the environment that i'm at like what foods i can eat or not yeah um pretty soon i'm gonna be starting season two of let us eat Mm -hmm. which is gonna be a different a, a little bit of a different format where i'm gonna be doing like home cooking stuff oh, okay. and in, in, in season two I'm really going to stress the importance of like food accessibility mm-hmm. and also eating vegan from home you know like access and also on a budget Yeah, I am obsessed with her. Oh, happy veggie wrap. Have you ever had a veggie wrap? Yeah, I've had it. 
ever had soy shrimp before? Uh, soy shrimp? Mm -hmm. No. Neither have I. Where's that at? It's in the Happy Veggie Wrap. Oh, really? Yeah. Soy shrimp. I might have to go with that. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of really dope places in LA. It seems like you are pretty aware of like all of them. How do you get into like all this just like plant based eating and like just very aware of like what's out there? Yeah, it was my roommate freshman year. Oh really? She was like so into plant based and environment and yeah. like we do YouTube series and we would like have these crazy debates yeah. about like radical veganism versus yeah. you know how the, the intersection with race and yeah so you know she never like pushed her agenda onto me mm -hmm. um because i was i would eat chicken she would tease me sometimes but then eventually i saw how she ate and i yeah. saw her diet and i was just like you know over the course of the years as we're so close i was like this is something that i could probably do and i could yeah. incorporate so i kind of just followed her lead yeah. and then when i got back home everywhere i went i looked for I kind of like followed that kind of that mindset where it's like I can find something I can yeah, do yeah that's dope no straws no straws no straws right right the, the whales yeah I mean, have you heard of the the, the steel straw now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm just, I'm glad that like major corporations are starting to say something about like the throwaway culture because like mm. Starbucks doing this like even though it is going to take two years which I think is too little too late mm. I think at the same time it is. It is important. It's important that they're at least making a statement. It makes some kind of statement, you know. Right. Like better than nothing. I get concerned, like on the other side of it. Like I took consum consumer culture and environmentalism, and the whole idea of like not in my backyard kind yeah. of thing. Like we don't want these huge like incinerators or these factories that go in minority communities um, that may be producing good product that's environmentally safe, recycling yeah. centers, but are harmful to people. Like. This right. intersection between like environmentalism only being seen through like whales right. or you know earth right when it's in your backyard right right I mean right. Cancer Alley like mm -hmm. look at just look at all the places where people people people's health is being like actively you know threatened right. like people are at risk today and like in our sit in Los Angeles mm -hmm. in New York in Louisiana in all around the place you know I mean Miami is going to be gone a few right. years like I said earlier in the car like what you put on your plate has the, has the power to actually change the world to some degree we need grassroots action like people taking it upon themselves to change what they're eating you know because I've said this in the intro the intro video to this series like one one hamburger is the equivalent of like several several thousands of gallons of water and like we need to do something about our consumerist lifestyles, you right, know, it's right. really putting us at risk. Um, and we're already we're already living out the um, the repercussions of our decisions. I've had a couple other people on the show so far who are singers, but you're a, like a jazz vocalist, which is a very unique thing for someone to be at your age. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell me a little bit about how you like got into that? My dad would take us on these road trips and we would listen to everything from like the Beatles to yeah. Stevie Wonder to Nat King Cole's Hit That Jive Jack. Yeah. And um, I, I like fell in love with not only just you know jazz but kind of all types of music and textures yeah. and stories and so i went to an all-black school uh, preparatory and each year we had a black history month yeah and so i really wanted to be shaka khan like listening to my funny valentine like her yeah. version of it like hooked me you know yeah and so um after listening to her and deciding i wanted to do it like my dad contacted one of his really good friends his name was ricky grundy he was a pianist so he made a um track from me on a cassette tape still have it to this day i started singing at the Merck park in their vocal workshop with howard yeah. smith and he like taught me almost everything that i know about like phrasing and songs and then i met my other mentor and coach barbara morrison yeah who taught me about performance and just they both took me under their wing and it took me a minute to like believe like I yeah. always have these questions where 
I would just be like crying and like, do I believe in myself? Like, who's yeah. gonna believe in me if I don't believe in myself first? Yeah. And like that was like a process through middle school and through high school, but I just stuck with it and like, I just get this feeling like where like my entire body just starts to like vibrate where I I just know that like this is this is what I'm here for, you yeah. know. And among other things, like like I'm forever a musician and a singer and yeah i have to do it like i just have to also you just put out this song last day of summer it's the last day of summer love was warm love was sweet what was the story behind that how that came together my mentor howlett like yeah. he's an amazing amazing writer and it's kind of a throwback. So yeah. in 1968, Spanky mm. Wilson sang this song, and um, it went like crazy. It was popular, especially in the LA jazz scene. This music video kind of shows another side of myself that I could really relate to. Like when yeah. it just is like you know, life goes on. Right, like, right. Life goes on, and here, this, as a 21 year old woman, here's what it's like for me at this stage. Right, right. Yeah. That's dope. No, that's really dope. Your voice is like, for a jazz vocalist, like you have like the perfect voice for that. Thank you. But since then, you know, my cousin and I, we've been playing, we have this special connection. We've been playing for, I don't know, like seven, eight years together. Yeah. And like instinctually, mm -hmm. like it's crazy. Like if I mess up and I'm singing, he will like know where I'm going to go next, hmm. you know? And that's happened in like competitions we've done. Yeah. I've like completely skipped a bridge. Oh, wow. And he's like been right under my feet and no one has known. Huh. And so, um, you know, it's, it's very special, but I'm thankful for my family. And yeah, that's great that like, it's kind of like a family affair that yeah. they're all involved in. And my grandfather plays drums too. Hmm. And um, he toured with Les McCann and Eddie Harris. So he was like monumental. Yeah, my dad, he plays drums too, so he's always, I, like, sometimes I hear rhythm before, like, like, if I'm writing an arrangement, mm -hmm. I'll hear, like, what's going on rhythmically, hmm. and I think that's because, like, my dad will always be, like, drumming on our foreheads, like, me huh. and my sister. Yeah. Like, Derek, check this out. You know, like. Have, have you um, changed any of your family's mind about, about plant-based eating at all? Um, they're, like, healthy people. We didn't eat pork or beef. Um, not a lot of fried food, a lot of home cooked meals. Um, my dad is kind of like this person who uh, appreciates good things in life mm -hmm. and appreciates health. So, you know, we went skiing, hiking, rock climbing, just things that keep your body and your mind kind of like sharp, you know? Right. So, I always take him, I think. You know, we enjoy eating vegan food, and my mom is more, a little bit more traditional, but she likes healthy food. She makes her own trail mix and stuff. Mm. Like, she's cute. Um, That's great. That's really good. Yeah, my sister's the same way. She's like in an outing club, and yeah. you know, just like health is important. Yeah. Health is so important. No, it's great that, that it's something that's on the forefront of everyone's mind. Mm -hmm. um, something that you're like, staying focused on you know like you make the time for it mm -hmm. thanks for watching this week's episode guys be sure to stop by happy veggie and redondo beef to try some of their delicious food and don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of let us eat Don't forget to like and subscribe. Do it!